Hey, what's up, guys? It's uh, your boy Ants Canada once again, aka Mikey Bustos, bringing you another ant video. Um, this tutorial is about um, two kinds of queens that we haven't really talked much about. Um, you know, we've created a tutorial on collecting queens during nuptial flight, a tutorial on how to do a test tube setup for them. We've created a tutorial on what to do when you first get your gravid queen. Now, all of those apply to queens that are known as fully claustral species, meaning they go into the ground and they completely seal themselves off and they form colonies on their own, you know? They lay eggs, they rear them themselves, and they don't eat at all throughout the entire process and so on and so forth. However, what we haven't really talked about much is that there are actually two other kinds of, um, I guess, queens that found their colonies, but they do it in a sort of unique way. First, there are queens known as semi-claustral. Uh, semi-claustral queens are different in that they mate, they establish a founding chamber, and they raise their young. However, they still forage above ground like an ordinary worker for food and they continue to do this until the first workers arrive. Examples of fully claustral queens include uh, ants belonging to Pogonomermex, which are harvester ants, several other kinds including Ponera in Australia, Myrmecia. So that's one category of queens that we haven't really talked about. Um, now for their setup, it's very similar to the fully claustral queens. Um, we essentially still have to create a test tube setup for them, so just an ordinary test tube setup like this. Um, but they still need to forage, so you can either connect your test tube to an outworld, or you place it into an outworld, and the queen will be able to leave and come back, um, you know, and nourish her eggs and continue to raise them. Until uh, the first workers arrive. Um, so there's that. And we also wanted to talk about the other kind of queen. Um, now, those, of course, are the social parasites in the ant world. Now, social parasites are unique in that they don't found their own colonies on their own, they need a host colony. Um, and what they do is they seek a nest of their host species and they enter the nest, infiltrate the colony, and they live with the colony actually until this parasite finds the queen and kills her. My skin, it's a lesson learned. And then the social parasite queen will essentially take over as the residing queen in the nest and eventually the host workers die off and the workers are, you know, slowly replaced by her own biological young. Really interesting actually. It's a really interesting symbiotic relationship. Alright, so how do you know if a queen ant that you've caught um, is a social parasite or not? Well, uh, the more you see pictures of social parasites, the more you get to notice that they have a certain look. Um, social parasites tend to have larger heads with larger mandibles. I'm thinking single mothers. Um, and of course, they need that because they need to kill the host queen. Um, and also, their gasters tend to be smaller. Shaped like hearts, chromatogasters start tend to drag home food so they could. The queens don't really need to fast very much. They don't need that much storage, in essence. They don't have to raise and nourish a colony from its beginnings. They break into a mature colony and these host workers take care of her young. So that's basically a way of determining uh, if the queen is a social parasite or not. So um, in our last video you saw 
uh, how many social parasites I was able to collect um, just on that day. And uh, examples of social parasites include um, Laceus claviger, which is a big one, um, and a lot of people refer to them as uh, citronella ants because of the strong like citronella lemony kind of smell that they release. Those colonies don't establish on their own. You can't just stick them into a test tube and expect them to raise a colony on their own. You have to provide them a host colony. Now, it's trickier than you think. I don't know anybody who's successfully done it uh, in captivity, but we know it can be done. Um, I feel like it might have been done in Europe somewhere, um, but uh, I, I believe it's certainly possible. I had a friend named Kelly who was very close to uh, successfully creating a social parasite colony. He had introduced the social parasite queen to the colony. The colony accepted the queen um, and they even began feeding through Truffolaxis. But in the end, the host queen ended up killing the social parasite queen, so it didn't work. Um, and we at the Ants Canada Ant Store this spring did 11 attempts to try to get a social parasite queen to raise her young. We provided a host colony at different stages even. Um, we introduced a queen to just a host queen who had eggs and brood. A logical world I'm so in love with ants it hurts I'm thinking formic oh, yeah. acid Farming habits Polymorphic messers Myrmecological world I want the ant so much it hurts I'm thinking single mothers Queen leaf cutters Fungal garden growers Come on, take it to the first Started at the park, they would hunt before dark with gaster shaped like hearts. Grammato gaster started to drag home food so they could feed each other. Feed each other. They fed all of the young so they could become pupae. Close my mind the way they eat close in time to start their lives as brand new working workers. Working workers. Oh. We introduced a social parasite queen to a host, Laceus queen, who had brood and a few workers in a test tube. On hands and knees, I'm in. And then we also tried introducing a social parasite queen to a fairly mature colony. Can Myrmex and Pogonor Myrmex and there's Polyogus and Dolichoderis Tetramorium ants at a Paraponera Paraponera Formica move fast, Myrmecosystes gasters grow like my love for Lassies of Penogasters and Cavanores those carpentry masters, carpentry masters. Oh. We're souls of mine, all at the same time. Oh, oh, the ones of every kind, oh, but it would be a crime to impose invasive ecological disasters. Myrmecological world. I'm so obsessed with ants, it hurts. I'm thinking for Macarium. And all 11 attempts failed. Now, I think the trick is to get the pairing correct. Getting that is kind of tricky. <laughs> because every time we've tried to introduce, there have always been fighting. Um, I feel like maybe matching the species is a little bit trickier. Perhaps the timing was significant. You know, maybe it's after a certain time during hibernation, something triggers the social parasitic queen to be ready to enter a host nest. I don't know. Um, so uh, we're going to try that again next spring after hibernation to try to introduce a social parasitic queen to a host colony so we can get a colony of 
the social parasite. If any of you guys try it, do make sure to film everything. Photograph, document, everything because it's generally undone, yet to be done in captivity. Um, and uh, it would be great to, to watch that. So anyway, hope this video helps. Now uh, you know of the two other kinds which we've waited so long <laughs> to tell you about. But now these queens are flying. Um, Laces parasites are flying right now. A lot of Myrmica are flying right now, um, and they're semi-claustral. Alright, thanks guys for all the support. Take care. Spread the ant love. Bye-bye. I'm thinking single mothers, queenly quarters, fungal garden grow. Take it to the first first. See, it started at the park. They would hunt before dark with gaster shaped like